Jimmy Clitheroe as the Clitheroe Kid with Peter Sinclair, Patricia Burke, Danny Ross, and Diana Day in... Jim's Highland Fling. Alfie, you're sure you don't mind me going to Scotland for New Year's Eve? No, not at all, Susan. You, you go if you want to. Well, I don't really want to, but Great Uncle Angus says he'd like to see the whole family for once. Well, it is quite all right with me, Susan. I mean, you are one of his relatives. Because though you were born in England, you've still got a lot of scotch inside you. You get whiskey in your blood. <laughs> you get a bit of scotch blood in your glass. Yeah, what you did. Oh, I will miss you. <laughs> It'll only be for three days, Alfie. Still, I'm glad you'll miss me. Oh, I will. But not as much as I used to when we first started courting. You know, in them days when you went away, I'd, I'd only got to think of your face and it made me cry. Oh, it was horrible. Did not you say? Not you say, I mean, you being not all there. No, not the... <laughs> but being away. I think I know what you mean, Alfie. Oh, good. You know, Susan, whenever I'm alone with you like this, I can... I, I can... I can... You can what, Alfie? I can hear a rustling in the bushes. What? <laughs> They're behind your granddad's privet. Hey, perhaps it's a bird. Listen. The rapids again. <laughs> I know who that is, all right. Come out. Down in the garden, something stirred. It was Alfie snogging with his daft old bird. <laughs> You can cut that out. We're talking, that's all. Well, I know one thing. It's a good job I'm letting the new year in. If they sent you two out at midnight, you'd only have to stop by the coal shed to gaze in each other's eyes, and we'd still be waiting at breakfast time. <laughs> so, you're going to let the new year in, are you? Of course. Well, me and the Black Hand Gang were offering to let it in at each of the gang's houses for a glass of lemonade and two mince pies. <laughs> I'll be ill for at least a week. <laughs> oh, there's only three of you in the gang, and knowing you, you won't get very ill on three lemonades and six mince pies. That's what I thought. So I had a brilliant idea of getting some more members in the gang so we could call at their houses as well. Uh, and how many are in the gang now? 175. <laughs> <laughs> Is that so? Yes, it's going to be marvellous. We're even thinking of asking if we can let the new year in at the police station. The police station? Why not? We should pick up a few coppers there. <laughs> oh, don't some mothers have them. <laughs> well, brother dear, it sounds as if you're going to have to cover a lot of ground on New Year's Eve. <laughs> That's right, sister dear. All I need is my bike. <laughs> You'll need a jet plane. We're going to Glasgow. Look, as long as I get the wind behind me and I don't eat too much plum pudding, I... who's going to Glasgow? <laughs> we are, you, me, Mother and Grandad, to spend Hogmanay with Great Uncle Angus. Susan, pull the other one. It's got bells on. No, it's true, Jimmy. Your granddad's had an invitation from his brother in an envelope with no stamp on. His brother wasn't in the envelope, but you think... <laughs> He, he, he wants to see all of you, including Susan, and it'll be a big disappointment for him. But for me, I mean, and not, not being with Susan. Alfie, oh, switch your tongue off so your brains can cool down. <laughs> Susan, is it true? Yes. If you don't believe me, ask Mother and Grandad. Oh, but I've got everything planned with the gang. I don't want to go to blinking Scotland. They're all foreigners. <laughs> I'm going to see me mum about this as soon as I put me back in. Catch the train on Sunday that arrives in Glasgow Central at 3.35 p.m. We will therefore be looking forward to seeing you unless we hear from you to the contrary. Yours I, Peter. Hmm. P.S. I note your remarks about rushing out at the last minute to catch the post, but you still owe me sixpence for the postage. <laughs> well, how does that sound, Pat? Oh, you, you Scotsman, you never miss a thing where money's concerned. Still, your letter sounds fine, Father. Oh, I'll bet Jimmy will be surprised when he gets home. Surprised? <laughs> He's had the biggest shock since Gobstoppers went up at a quarter. 
There you are. Trust you to hear what I was saying. Ma'am, what's all this about us going up to Glasgow for a, a mahogany? <laughs> Hogmanay, Jim. Well, whatever it is, it's a rotten twist. We're not really going, are we? Why not? I'll bet you have a lot of fun up there. You know what? The only fun I can think of will be walking into a room full of men in kilts carrying a bicycle pump. <laughs> no, no, that'll do, Jimmy. We've been invited by your great uncle Angus and we're going and that's that. But I can't go. I've made all my arrangements with the Black Hand Gang. Look, if you want some company of your own age, there'll be at least one little boy up there you can play with. But I want to play with me pals, not one of me daft Scotch relatives. <laughs> He's not a relative. He lives next door to Angus. He's a Macintosh. I don't care if he's a number, Ella. <laughs> I'm not playing with him. Look, you're going to Glasgow with the rest of us. Your grandfather's written a letter saying we'll be coming and he's just going out to post it. Is he? Yeah. I'll take it for you, Grandad. Oh, no, you won't. <laughs> oh, no. I don't want it posting in the dustbin. I'll do it myself on my way to the Rose and Crown. Can I come with you and drown my sorrows? <laughs> Oh, stop talking nonsense, will you? It's all right for you, Grandad. You'll enjoy it, especially when you see the Loch Ness Monster. What? We're not going anywhere near Loch Ness, so when am I likely to be seeing the monster? Just after closing time. <laughs> Postman, hey, you're late, aren't you? Has the dog next door been trying to have you for his dinner? <laughs> now, look, son, I've had a hard day and I'm in no mood for jokes. This is the second delivery. Ooh, well, no wonder you have had a hard day if you have to deliver all the letters twice. <laughs> oh, very comical. You wouldn't be so funny if you had this job to do. Oh, full of aches and pains. Oh, I recognize you now. Hop along, Cassidy. <laughs> Pardon? Well, that's what, what all the lads call you. You're the one with the bad feet, aren't you? Come on, on my feet. <laughs> Is there anybody in besides you? No, they're all out shopping. Would you like to come in for a mustard bath? <laughs> Look, you're sure there's nobody in except you? Oh, I've told you. Well, that's a pity. Well, in that case, I suppose I'll have to get your signature. Well, all right, but won't you get into trouble? What for? Collecting autographs instead of delivering the post. Oh, you funny little boy. <laughs> you know, if you were my lad, I'd take you down to the post office, lock you in the mailbag and hope for a robbery. <laughs> now, look, I've got a letter here for Mr. Sinclair and I've also got this parcel addressed to Master James Cliver. That don't snatch. Well, that's for me. I'm in, Master James Cliver. Oh, come on, hand it over. One at a time, one at a time. There's this letter. Oh, give it here. I'll stick it in my pocket. Now, can I have my parcel, please? Well, stop tugging at it. You're tearing the wrapping. But it's for me, a parcel. I wonder what's inside it. A rattlesnake, I hope. <laughs> right, look. Come on. Stand here first. Stand oh, here. All right, lend me a pencil. Oh, yeah. Now then, James Clitheroe. Yeah. Now, let me see what it is. Must be a Christmas present that's arrived late. Hey, come on. Hand it over. Give over, it's my present, not yours. I'm talking about my pencil. <laughs> oh, smashing. It's from Great Uncle Angus in Glasgow. I'm not interested. Give me my pencil. Oh, look what it is. A smashing toy dining car, complete with seats and electric lights for me train set. Just what I've always wanted. Isn't it a smasher? Yes, very nice. Now, my pencil, come on. You should have been here for Christmas, this dining car. Hey, why is it taking so long to come from Glasgow? Perhaps it got shunted into the siding at Carlisle. Can I have my pencil? <laughs> Listen, mister, there's a note inside from Great Uncle Angus. I'll read it to oh, you. Oh, never mind you. Dear Jimmy, I hope the enclosed present is Scotch, you know. Thank you. 
thanks. I hope the enclosed present will be something to be going on with. Sorry I have not been able to enclose the other things, but the store forgot to order the set of electric signals and the water tower. Oh. However, you can look forward to receiving them when we meet for Hogmanay. Oh, it's that marvellous of him, mister. Don't you wish you had a great uncle like me? Yes, he might send me a few pencils now and again. <laughs> Now, look, come on. Well, all right, keep your bag on. <laughs> Ta. Oh, what a day I've had. What with meeting you, being bitten by a dog, and I'm wet through with the rain, my feet are killing me, and we've got my wife's mother coming. Well, um, just a minute, mister. Mister. Oh, it's enough to drive you around the bend. What, what is it now? Happy New Year. God. <laughs> Father, I don't mind you wearing your kilt, nor your tam o shanter, but do you have to take that knobbly old walking stick with you? Oh, it's my crummer, Pat, and I, well, why shouldn't I pick my knobbly old walking stick, as you call it? Because if anybody sees you with your knobbly stick and your knobbly knees, they'll think you've got three legs. <laughs> oh, very funny. Well, it would be a novelty, a man with three legs, especially when one of them's got a touch of woodworm. <laughs> Will you stop being funny and get your coat on? We'll miss the train if we don't catch that ten o'clock bus. Oh, I've just been checking up on the phone, ma'am. The ten o'clock bus doesn't run on Sunday mornings. What? Well, why didn't you say so before? We'll never catch that Glasgow train now. Yes, we will, Grandad. I've ordered a taxi. Oh, well, that's all. A taxi? You've no right to go ordering taxis without my permission. Now, now, Father, we didn't check on the buses, so it's our own fault, and anyway... It'll be more comfortable in a taxi. Oh, well, I suppose you're right. Mind you, if everybody'd been like me, we could have caught an earlier bus. I've already packed all the things I'll be needing. Here's a pair of clean socks and a corkscrew. What was that? <laughs> uh, nothing, Grandad. Mum, have you packed your things yet? Oh, I can't seem to find any more room in this case. Now, what's in this cardboard box? Let me see. Oh, no, Jimmy, what's this? Just a few things for me to play with, Mum. A few things. There's your yo-yo, your catapult, your water pistol. Water you pistol? To... That's me death ray gun. <laughs> well, what do you want to take that to Glasgow for? This is me secret weapon, Jim's answer to the bagpipes. <laughs> well, you can just take your box of tricks out of that case and put it back in the front room drawer. But, Grandad, I've got to have some fun. Don't argue, Jimmy. We haven't got room for all that lot, no. Go on, just put them back in the front room. Oh, all right, ma'am. And if Susan's still in there with Alfie, tell her to hurry up. When right, ma'am, we'll call. Trust the lovebirds to spend the last few minutes together in the snogging room. Wonder what they're up to in there. No use wondering, Jim. <laughs> just listen at the keyhole. <laughs> Have you got everything clear, Alfie? Well, yes, Susan. I've got to phone you tonight. If you don't phone me first and tomorrow and Tuesday as well, give us a kiss. Hello. The wrestling match is about to start. <laughs> Two fools or one submission. And you know what Mother asked you when she gave you the key to the front door, Alfie? But yes, Susan. Every day I'm going to come round to your house and set fire to it. Got me lots of fire. <laughs> On my motorbike. Be in the grace of me. Oh, give us a kiss. Oh, I'm in a hurry. Ah, so am I. Give us a kiss. That's three times his asked her. He must have had his porridge this morning. <laughs> oh, you've got to get down to the railway station. Yeah, well, well, I'll come with you and you can kiss me on the platform. Oh, I couldn't. Not with all those people about. Well, take him in the guards' van. You feel at home there with all the other fish. <laughs> what do you want? Come on, Scraggy Neck. We've got to get on our way to Glasgow. All oh, right, I'm coming. Good. Well, uh, cheerio, Alfie. I'll, I'll send you a postcard. Having a wonderful time. Glad you're not here. You know, uh, you've changed your tune all of a sudden. I thought you didn't want to go to Glasgow. Oh, he didn't, till he heard about the presents he'll be getting from Great Uncle Angus. Honestly, the things some children will do for a few silly toys. It's nothing to what some daft grown-ups will do for a few sloppy kisses. <laughs> You've been listening at the door again, haven't you? Yes, and I nearly went out and bought some birdseed. Birdseed? What for? For you. All I could hear was, Give us a kiss. Give us a kiss. <laughs> Give us a kiss. <laughs> for a minute, I thought Grandad had 
won a parrot in the pub raffle. <laughs> Right, Pat, you go ahead. Come on, Susan. Here we are, ma'am. This one. There's only one old fella in here, and he's asleep. Oh, what a relief. I thought we were going to have to stand all the way to Glasgow. Yes, it's lucky I was with you. You what? If we hadn't had to turn the taxi around to go back for your overcoat, we'd have been 20 minutes earlier. Yes, we'd have had no trouble in finding seats. Well, you'd have been all right anyway. There's a cattle truck at the back. <laughs> That's enough. Now, come on, open the door. Right, Mum. Oh, we better put our stuff on this side. The old chap there spilled up the other rack. That's one. Give me the other things. Here you are, Father. I can manage myself. It's not very heavy. Jimmy, give me your carrier bag with the food in. I'm not trusting you with my apples. I'll put the bag on the rack down this end. You can't reach. I can if I stand on the seat. There's room here above the old fella. Oh, my man. What are you doing, you wee devil? <laughs> Sorry, mister. I, I thought I was standing on the seat. Oh, Jimmy. Jimmy, you're the limit. I, I'm sorry, sir. He, he was trying to put something on the rack, you see. Yes, the, the bag with me, me, me apples and... Oh, heck. Look out. Oh, my head. Are you trying to kill me? Oh, young boy, it's a dear enough, but ruffians, ruffians, hoodlums. Why, no discipline, no respect. When I was your age, I was seen in that hair. I was never allowed to speak in front of my elders. Ah, well, you make it up for it now. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, you apologise properly to the gentleman or you'll get a good spanking. You will. Hey, Susan. <laughs> Aren't people funny when they're asleep? Keep your voice down or you'll wake them. All right, but look at them. Mam's head rolling about like a puppet. The old fella in the corner with his chin in his hand. He keeps slipping an inch at a time. <laughs> Ate one little push on his elbow and he's had his chips. <laughs> Don't you dare. I'm not touching him. Hey, look at Grandad growling away with his mouth open. He looks like a walrus waiting for a fish. Diggs, please. May I see you, Diggs, please? Mm -hmm. oh. oh, yes, uh, just a minute. Um, Father. Father, the, the ticket. Mm -hmm. What's uh. that? Tickets. Oh, the tickets. Ha, ha. Oh, here they are. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Straight through, no change. Are we nearly in Glasgow, mister? Oh, no, 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 Sonny. Uh, another three hours. Not even in Scotland, yet. Oh, heck. Hey, you'd think we were in Scotland, though, when you look out at the fields, wouldn't you? Oh, uh, why? Well, all those cows. Everyone's got its own set of bagpipes. <laughs> <laughs> well, I must say, that's a very good one, mate. <laughs> Set of the bagpipes. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, very funny. <laughs> well, excuse me now till I wake the old gentleman there, will you? Be careful. He might clout you with his claymore. Oh, dear. Bit on the touchy side, is he? Touchy? He went raving mad with me just because I gave him one of me apples. <laughs> it fell on his head. Well, he should have kept his mouth open. Hi, <laughs> right, Jimmy. Mind he. He is a bit of an old narc. He comes and sits in a smoking compartment. But as soon as I lit my pipe, he started coughing. And I had to go out and smoke in the corridor. Well, whatever he is, he's got to wake up and show me his ticket. I'll wake him for you, shall I? Yes, thanks very much, Sonny. Uh, but not with an apple. Oh, no. Wakey, wakey! What's that? <laughs> You, 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 you hooligan. That does it. You're going to feel my belt across your bottom. Come here. Jimmy, sit down. Oh, no, you don't. You'll not stop me, you, 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 you Sassenach. What? Me, a Sassenach? I'm a sinker and proud of it. 
The sinkers have been Scotsmen for a thousand years. They were the Scotsmen. They were monkeys and kelp. Listen to me, you old old... Not Grandad. Not Grandad. Shut up, Jimmy. <laughs> No, no, gentlemen, please, please. I don't want an island war breaking out on my train. And remember, please, there are two ladies present, dear. Two? <laughs> we counting you, Susan. Well, uh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have lost my temper. No, you should have lost that wee devil when he was born. Oh, stop it, all of you! I must say, this is a fine start to our holiday. I must say, this is a fine start to our holidays. Coming all the way from Glasgow to get a dose of English pneumonia. Now, now, Angus, don't go upsetting yourself. You'll bring on your indigestion. No doubt your brother Peter has a good explanation. Don't go upsetting yourself, the woman says. Yeah, I drive all the way from Scotland. I haven't eaten for six hours. I arrive punctually at my brother's home, and there's not a soul in the house. But I've been through just as much as you, Angus. But these things are sent to try us. Hello, did you want something? Can I help you? Not unless you know how we can get into this house. We've been knocking for ten minutes and there's no answer. Ah, well, that's because there's nobody in. <laughs> Flora, my dear, this is what they call an Englishman. Oh. No wonder they dare not give us home rule. <laughs> now, now, Angus... You will have to excuse my husband, young man. He suffers with his stomach. Oh, I didn't hear anything. <laughs> well, well, about you the clearly all stuff? We are relatives of Mr. Sinclair, and we've come here to stay for a few days. Oh, well, well why don't you go in out to the rain? You might catch go standing out there. You dark come on. Now, now, Angus. Uh, the door is locked, and we have no key. Oh, I see. Well, no wonder you cross. That like my Auntie Maggie was when she got married and we all stood in the rain and we couldn't get in the house for the reception because Arthur had the key and he was late. Arthur was Auntie Maggie's son. Let's do her first husband. But he gave her away. But Arthur, not her first husband. And she got soaked, so she hit him with a bucket and he left home. <laughs> that, not, not her first husband, that Arthur. So ever since that, they've kept it under the mat. Kept what under the mat? The bouquet, Arthur, or Aunt Maggie's first husband? <laughs> no, the, the door key. Yes, yes. Well, there is no mat here. Oh, no. Not the clitoris keep theirs in the tool shed around the back. Well, why didn't he say so before? I'll go and get it, Flora. Yeah, it's not there. How do you know? Because I've got it. You yeah, what? <laughs> now, now, Angus, young man, would you please open the door? Yes, yeah, of course I will. Sit down, then. I can't stand anymore. Will he open the door, you blethering stupid half -way? Now, now, Agnes. <laughs> But I haven't got it. I, well, I have got it, but not yet. I've, I've got it there at home, so I'll get it. Ta-da! Wait till Peter gets here. I'll have something to say to that brother of mine when I... I'll have something to say to that brother of mine when I see him. The house locked up. And us stuck outside here in the snow. Are you sure you put the correct date in the letter, Grandad? Of course that did. And the time of the train. Your mother read it. Oh, yes, there was no mistake. Oh, it really is too bad of him and his wife both being out when we arrive. Oh, Father, we must do something. It is perishing. Oh, if I step up round the oh. corner, Grandad, why don't you go in there and look for him? What makes you think he'll be in a pub? Well, he's your brother. <laughs> I mean, a Scotsman, I mean. Will you cut out your jokes? This is serious. Oh, you poor things. You're not trying to get in that house, are you? No, we're playing leapfrog. You want a game? Oh, be quiet, Jimmy. Uh, we're relatives of Mr. Angus Sinclair, and we've come up to stay for a couple of days. Oh, well, I'm afraid you're unlucky. Mm -hmm. The house has been inches deep in water, so they've gone away. Where have they gone? To buy a roof. <laughs> I don't understand, Mrs. Well, they had a burst. Uh-huh. The place was flooded, so they've gone away for Hugmany. I promised to light fires for them every day till they get back. Next Tuesday or Wednesday it'll be... But they asked us for Hugmany. I was going to let their first boot in tomorrow night. Uh, Luke, would you like to come into my house for a warm and a cup of tea? Or maybe a wee drop of whiskey? Oh, thank you very much. Well, Father, what are we going to do? Well, we'll just have to go back home in the next train. 
after we've had a wee warm in this good lady's house. Uh-huh. Not to mention a wee drop of whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> to think we had all this journey for nothing. Aye, oh. and all that money wasted. Yes, and all that talk about the good time we'd have had. Oh, right, all right, I'm sorry. Where are we going for our summer holidays, Grandad? A day trip to North Africa? <laughs> Thank goodness we're nearly home. I never want to go through all that again. When you come to the end of a perfect day. All oh, right, all right. We can do without that. We've suffered enough today. Well, oh, don't get on to me. We didn't go to see my daft brother. What? I, I didn't mean that, Grandad. Oh, we don't want any more trouble from you. Well, it was only a joke. Well, we've had enough of your jokes on this journey. Telling that woman on the train. So we'd all been all the way to Glasgow and back to get a bucket of Scotch water for Grandad's whiskey. <laughs> well, she was too nosy. You keep quiet, Jimmy. And now listen, my lad. If you cause any more trouble, you'll feel the weight of my hand. Hello. Alfie must be in our house. The lights are on. Alfie? Yes. Mother gave him the key and asked him to light a fire each day while we were away. He must be crackers trusting him with a box of matches after what he did on bonfire night. What was that? He went out in the dark without a torch, struck a match and looked in the fireworks box for a Roman candle. He found one. <laughs> Just before a rocket found him, bending over. Oh, don't listen to his stories, Grandad. Jimmy, hold this parcel a minute, and while I get the door key. Right, Mum. I hope Alfie's left some food in the pantry. Don't be clever. Oh, dear, home at last. It's a relief to put these cases down. I will just dump everything and I'll make a cup of tea. I'll give Alfie a shout. Right. Alfie! Alfie home! Hey, Tarzan! We've brought your monkey back! <laughs> what was that? Hello, Alfie. You're not Alfie. Uncle! It's Great Angus! Uncle Angus! Uncle Angus, what are you doing here? Waiting for you, of course. Well... You're a fine one, Angus, and no mistake. Oh, hello, Flora. Hello, Peter. So you've arrived at last, all of you. We've arrived? We've just been all the way to Glasgow and back to see you. Aye. Thirty pounds I've spent and probably caught pneumonia standing outside your house. And you, here all the time. Are you drunk already? What? <laughs> I had a drink from your neighbour. Two, Grandad. Remember, you coughed for five minutes before the woman would open the bottle again. <laughs> I am Jimmy. But, Peter, why did you go to our house when Angus wrote and told you we were coming here? We got no letter from anyone. No. That you must have done. I sent it at the same time as Jimmy's present. Well, the postman must have got fed up delivering your letters with no stamp on. Don't talk to us like you old reprobate. What? You're asking for trouble, yeah. Angus. Go on, let's have a scrap. I'll hold your kilts. Oh, sure. <laughs> Jimmy, you collected the parcel from the postman. Now, come on, was there a letter? No, of course the... Oh, whack. Oh, I put it in my pocket and gave it... Forgot to give it to me granddad. What? You mean we've travelled 500 miles, spent a fortune, froze to death, and it's all your fault? Well, laddie, and uh, what have ye got to say? Well, um, uh, um, uh, Happy New Year, Uncle Angus. <laughs> Those involved with the Cougarow Kid this week were Peter Sinclair as grandfather, Patricia Burke as mother, Danny Ross as Alfie Hall, Diana Day as Susan, Derek Geiler as the postman and ticket collector, John Laurie as Angus, and Molly Weir as Flora. The recorded program was written by James Casey and Frank Roscoe, produced by James Casey, and starred Jimmy Cliverow as the kid himself. I still haven't recovered from yesterday. Here I am in bed on New Year's Eve, and they're all living it up downstairs. The clock's just struck twelve. A right happy hogmanay this is. Jimmy, are you still awake? Uh, yes, Grandad. 
But I'm being quiet. Well, stop it. Hey? Come on in, everybody. Jimmy, take this. What is it, Grandad? Lemonade, of course. Right, all together now. Should all acquaintance be but a... Come on, Jimmy, sing up. And all 